Hey guys, Jonathan Gray here with the Empower Network, back again with my puppy Loki. And I um, wanted to talk about hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, which is the reason for my words of caution in yesterday's blog post of feeding human raw meat to dogs, or rather raw meat that was meant to be cooked for human consumption. So um, back in 2010, my little garbage hound here who... Uh, is a shameful opportunist when it comes to any kind of trash laying on the counter or I mean she pulled the trash can out of the closet before I mean there's really not much you can do to stop her except for now I have baby locks on everything anyways so uh, my sister decided to fry some chicken one night some Tyson chicken to be exact and uh, she left the box a little too close to the edge of the counter and Loki little miss mischievous here went and grabbed the box and she chewed on the spongy thing that they put underneath the meat to absorb some of the juices and she sucked all the juice out. Um, also, a little footnote on that, my sister even got sick from eating the cooked chicken after it had been thoroughly, thoroughly cooked all the way through. So it was a pretty, pretty nasty batch, so it probably wouldn't happen with everything, but it's uh, definitely a possibility to watch out for. In any, in any event, um, the next morning when I woke up, Loki seemed a little bit lethargic. Didn't think much of it. I mean, sometimes she wakes up in the morning and she's a little sleepy, not really always super excited to go for a walk. But um, on our walk, she started throwing up. So I brought her in back in the house to see if maybe she wanted to drink some water. She just wasn't feeling good. Give her a rest and we're going to try at it again. Um, she didn't stop throwing up, though. She just kept going over and over and over again. And so naturally, I assumed there was something wrong more than just, like, she ate something that made her a little bit nauseous. She threw up once or twice, which is usually the case with dogs. Took her to the vet. Um, she was, again, very lethargic, throwing up in the car on the way over there. Couldn't even make it to the vet, and I live like five minutes from my vet. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't, weren't entirely sure what was wrong with her. And so after blood doing some blood testing, it turned out that her, um, her red blood cell count was extremely high. And uh, at a dangerous level, to a point where it was starting to come out of her, um, of her orifices, you know, such as in her vomit and also in her diarrhea, which uh, led her to having a two-night hospital stay, and me spending over a thousand dollars. She had to be on severe, uh, serious IV fluids, subcutaneous fluids. Also, she was um, getting fed potassium and things like that, a lot of antibiotics to get this out of her system. So, also, one of the most important things to remember about this is a dog that contracts hemorrhagic gastroenteritis can die within 24 hours of contracting the disease if not met with serious, serious treatment. Um, many blog posts I've read about people who have had this disease and uh, people whose dogs have had this disease and vets who have missed it because they thought it was irritable bowel syndrome or they just ate something wrong, the dog was dead within 24 hours of that happening. So um, this is why I caution on feeding raw meat that it hasn't been properly processed for dogs. Um, most raw dog foods will flash freeze their foods for um, added precautions, or some will use at, le at the very least apple cider vinegar because that can um, purge any really harsh bacteria. Although they can take most things, there are certain things they cannot handle. So I um, hope this was educational, and uh, thanks for tuning in. All right, bye.